In this video, we will discuss about how Citadel have been hiding their true short position. You may remember that Citadel's security sold and not yet purchased had appeared to have decreased. But Biotech Moost has done some insane due diligence to prove that actually that isn't the case and that Citadel's liabilities have actually been getting even larger. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. I want to start by reading through the due diligence and reading through exactly what's happened. But it might get a bit confusing, so I'm going to make sure to explain it really, really simply after we've gone through the numbers. So over the last four or five years, Citadel's securities sold and not yet purchased have been increasing significantly. In 2018, it was 22 billion, 2019 that jumped up to 25 billion, in 2020 that rocketed to 57 billion, and in 2021 that shot to 65 billion. Now, as of 2022, it appeared this number had reduced from 65 billion down to around 45 billion. But as I said, Biotech Moost has proved that actually it's even increased up to 83 billion, significantly higher than it was back in 2021. Now, as a quick reminder of exactly what securities sold and not yet purchased, actually are their effectively synthetic shares. Now, these synthetics are created in two separate ways. Number one, you have the synthetic created when a hedge fund or short seller wants the short sale shares of AMC, but Citadel can't locate any. Therefore, they simply create a fake share for that hedge fund to shore into the market. Somehow that's allowed and exempt under their bona fide market maker exemption, which is absolute rubbish. But you also have synthetic shares created on the other side of the trade. When regular APEs like you and I want to buy shares of AMC, obviously there's no shares left available for sale because APEs are holding all of their shares. But if you and I place a buy order, they somehow use their infinite liquidity machine to fulfill our buy orders by creating additional synthetic shares for us to buy. Now Citadel had been trying to say this number of synthetic shares had reduced significantly from 2021 down from $65 billion worth of synthetics, down to $45 billion. But as we can see from this due diligence, they'd actually been hiding around $35 to $40 billion worth of synthetics. And the true number is actually $83.28 billion. Now this paragraph here says that reverse repo agreements and repo agreements are collateralized primarily by receiving or pledging securities. Typically, the company has rights of a rehypothecation with respect to the securities collateral received under those reverse repo agreements. Also, the counterparty generally also has rights of rehypothecation with respect to the securities collateral received from the company under regular repo agreements. And as of December 31, 2022, substantially all securities collateral received under repo agreements and reverse repo agreements had been repledged. Now, what that basically means is they split their synthetic shares down into three separate categories. So you have securities that have been sold but not yet purchased, and you also have securities that have been pledged and repledged, aka given to somebody else but also not yet purchased. So in the repo and reverse repo facilities, Citadel receives pledged assets and then goes on to re-pledge them or give them to somebody else. And they also pledge securities themselves again by giving those securities to somebody else as well. So basically, as part of a repo or reverse repo transaction, if one of these hedge funds gives Citadel back their synthetic shares, Citadel can take those synthetic shares and re-land them or rehypothecate or re-pledge them to somebody else. And we also know from this last line that substantially all securities collateral received under repo and reverse repo agreements had been repledged. And as of December 31, 2022, the fair value of securities collateral received under those reverse repo agreements was $17.7 billion. 
and the fair value of securities collateral pledged for regular repo agreements was $19.7 billion. So basically, Citadel is being given synthetic shares as collateral and is then relending out those exact same synthetic shares to be shorted over again. So if you run the math and take the $45 billion worth of securities sold but not yet purchased, and the $17.7 billion and $19.7 billion in synthetic shares that have effectively been relent out, that's $83 billion total. So, basically, Citadel's unpurchased liabilities, aka securities that have been sold or replaged or pledged again without ever being purchased, is still steadily increasing. Now, somebody else that has a liability position that is way too high is JP Morgan. As Alasdair Mechliot tweeted, he said, JP Morgan's massive gold derivative short position may be larger than the bank's assets. It says today, one of the top money managers in the world warned that JP Morgan's gold derivative short position may be larger than all of the bank's assets. He then pondered the ramifications for JP Morgan. If the price of gold shoots up a $1,000, Dr. Stephen Lee posted, saying, what I lose sleep over is how much exposure does a bank like JP Morgan have to the gold derivatives market? We know that JP Morgan has been caught and fined many times for manipulating the precious metals market and is therefore clearly very overexposed. He thinks that JP Morgan's gold short position is larger than the bank's total assets. And therefore, if the price of gold shoots up by $1,000 and JP Morgan takes a 50% loss or 100% loss, the bank could end up going bankrupt. Now, speaking of those complex derivatives and complex short positions, Elon Musk actually spoke about complex derivatives last year. Now, this kind of adds to my video from yesterday. Elon Musk previously said that too often, sophisticated hedge funds have used short selling and complex derivatives to take advantage of small investors. He said they'll short a company, conduct a negative publicity campaign to drive the stock price down temporarily and then cash out and then do it all over again many, many times. And he said the term for this, as you may be aware, is short and distort. Clearly, Elon Musk has voiced his dislike for short sellers many, many times, and it's great to have Elon Musk on the same side as us. But I also wanted to touch on this short and distort campaign because we know that it's something that happens on AMC every single day. So Kay has tweeted saying they've just done their quarterly, Go through my old posts and see what the AMC spam bot accounts look like. Now they've said a lot of these accounts have either been suspended, deleted, or have been reproposed into political propaganda accounts. And they said, I suggest you all take a look yourselves at your old posts, especially Adam Aaron's old posts as well. They said, I use a burner account to follow the really suspicious accounts. I see and they said in 90% of the time. Within three to six months, most of those accounts are reproposed or suspended. So I guess what I'm encouraging you to do is not even necessarily to listen to me, but to perform your own due diligence and read for yourself and make up your own mind about AMC. Not to follow what I say, not to follow what other YouTubers say, not to follow what people on Twitter say, not to follow what's said in the comments down below, but to make up your own mind. And something interesting. I did want to point out as AMC AP tweeted, the short interest for AMC is at an all-time high and the cost to borrow is rocketing back up again. No longer is the short interest on free float around 20% or 19 or 18% of the float. It's now around 25% with 130 million shares shorted legally. So that's a quarter of the entire float being legally shorted. Well, we've also got a cost to borrow average fee of 676% being paid on those short positions and a cost to borrow maximum of 1,000%. That means these shorts are paying 10 times their annual position each and every year just to continue shorting AMC. And as I've spoken about before, I expect this number to continue increasing and I expect these shorts to continue paying more and more and more money. So continue shorting. It will get to the point when they end up blowing their entire fund on these short fees for their AMC short position, 
and the fund is forced to close down, and they're forced to close out of their shorts. You may say, well, surely that's going to take ages. But even if they're shorting A and C with only 10% of their entire fund size, that still means the fund will be gone in 12 months' time. Speaking of funds or Ponzi schemes that would likely be gone in 12 months' time, check out this tweet about Robin Hood. So Robin Hood has posted disagreeing with the SEC and effectively siding with Citadel on the new SEC proposed rules. Robin Hood has posted saying the SEC has proposed rules that would turn back the clock fundamentally and negatively changing the way retail investors' stock trades are executed. And they've said at Robin Hood there are no wealth or income barriers to opening a brokerage account. And they've said the cost of trading has never been lower. Basically, Robin Hood is siding with Citadel and does not want the SEC to change their rules likely around payment fraud flow and other rules proposed because somehow it would make it more difficult for us, the retail investors, to invest. But as Bigham's tweeted, he said, it's more likely that Robinhood would end up going under because Robinhood is effectively a Ponzi scheme, and if the SEC did change their rules, this would expose it. Robinhood as a company obviously doesn't make any money from being a stock trading platform. They clearly obviously are making massive, massive losses because of all their new developments and all the employees they hired. The only way Robinhood actually gets money in the door is through payment for order flow, basically selling their customer data directly to Citadel. I think if Robinhood is siding with Citadel and they both want to oppose these new SEC rules, I think clearly these SEC rules are a brilliant idea and would likely end up with Robin Hood going bankrupt and Citadel struggling more and more. And the reason that Citadel would be struggling more and more is because they wouldn't have that advantage over retail investors by seeing all of their investing data. If Citadel can no longer front run the Robin Hood customers, Citadel loses their edge and stops making more money. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.